This is no more a plan to regulate the Internet than the First Amendment is a plan to regulate free speech. They both stand for the same concept, openness, expression, and an absence of gatekeepers telling people what they can do, where they can go, and what they can think. Okay, here's the bottom line when it comes to the knockdown drag out over net neutrality in Washington. Simple. How much more money are you going to have to pay in order to access anything and everything through the internet and watch your favorite shows? Midpoint at the top of the list, of course, through broadband. All right, these are simple questions. Let's get some simply stated answers here and not the melange of madness others will focus on. From the Society to Advance Financial Education, Steve Beeman joins us in the house right now. Okay, Steve, let's get to it. Net neutrality is now going to be the law of the land as the FCC passed it today. Mark Cuban, the owner of the Dallas Mavericks, who made a lot of his money in tech, he's already come out and said, these FCC net regulations will spill over and TV as we know it is over. What's your take? I think there's two points I want to make. First of all, in the most open administration in our history, they hid a 350-page regulatory document from the public while they passed this. So this is another example of we'll wait to see what's in the law after they pass it. So that's number one concern. Number two, there are going to be severe unintended consequences for this, Ed. And I, I get a little bit concerned for the future of the net because of this. Right now, you and I have a pretty good Skype connection, and that's because I pay extra for higher bandwidth. Well, this net neutrality regulation will eliminate the ability of the companies to charge me for that extra bandwidth. So guess what? It won't be there. But the government says, wait a minute, that would be a good thing because then with us running it, we will then force them to give everybody the higher bandwidth, and that will make sure that everybody runs at this sort of speed. Now, you know that's what's going to happen. Well, that's what they said when they regulated airlines. That's when they said when they regulated the phone companies. <clears throat> this will affect innovation in the Internet. It's not a good thing, even though it looks like a populist good thing, and that's the danger of it. Is it possible, though, that we will still get some sort of, and I've heard this discussion before, that we won't see a lot of the, the technological advances moving forward because companies are not making money. Steve, do you really think that that's going to happen because won't, somebody sooner or later still look to get an advantage they'll look to start something they'll look to do something different and it will still bleed through if you will to the consumer I do think we will see an expanded internet capability you know as we go through time that's not really a question it's more the speed at which that technology will become available this is going to slow it down because there will be less incentive frankly to increase the size of the pipelines and we should point out America is not the fastest internet speed around the world to begin with I don't have the numbers in front of me but last time I looked I thought we were 20th 30th or somewhere like that we're buried in that sense aren't we yeah, we're using a lot of old cable as opposed to the new fiber optics. So when a new country comes online, it's actually easier to give them faster Internet because they're all brand new fiber optic cable. We are replenishing our fiber optics in this country, and that's got us to that point. We've got to speed it up, and we will. Again, it's just going to slow it down, and it's going to make it more difficult in the near term for shows like this to take place because people won't be able to get that additional bandwidth. All right, about 90 seconds. Let's touch on some other things here very quickly today. U.S. consumer prices drop in January. They're the largest since 2008. What does that tell us about any connection to the Fed or what's going on now? Well, several points again. I think it's important that people are watching bulls, bears, and bucks because they'd have known this was coming. <laughs> this is a result of oil prices coming down. We've seen it happen for months now. And this is also part of the government's changing of the way they measure inflation that excludes food and fuel and all these things. So as fuel trickles through the economy, it lowers prices. What that will do is it's got the Fed in this pickle, and they've admitted this in their Humphrey Hawkins hearings, where they want the economy to grow, but it's not growing where they want it. So they've now theoretically held off till September before they really start looking to raise rates. All right, and real quickly, last thing here, China apparently is dropping some of the world's companies from its approved state purchase lists. It seems like they're trying to bring everything in-house, yes? Yes, and not a surprise at all. China is out for China's best interest. They always have been and they always will be. They are a good trading partner of ours, but they're not an ally. And this is just another indication China is becoming self-sufficient as fast as they can. Is it going to affect any businesses here in America, profit margins, things on Wall Street? Uh, Cisco and some of the major providers will get hurt a little bit, but that's not the bulk of their earnings, so it won't be a major hit to them. Um, we can only hope that China sees the error of its ways in the future and reopens up to these things. Ah, China seeing the error of its ways. My goodness, my friend, we are hoping for an awful lot today. Uh, we will, of course, continue to talk about this whole net neutrality issue because this is going to be a story for some time to come consumer-wise as well. Steve Beeman, always a pleasure, my friend. Thanks so much. We'll talk to you soon. 
Thanks, Ed, for the show. All right, take care. It remains one of the most talked about health issues in America. Well, actually, if you think about it, one of the most talked about issues in America doesn't really have much to do about health. It has to do with who's going to be president of the United States in 2016. Let's think about that for a moment. CPAC is, so is Chris Christie. Next on Midpoint. Midpoint.